Welcome to Really American. I am Michael Hayne. Now, as the deranged, psychotic, weirdo, criminal, con man, orange clown Trump was desperately trying to recover from yesterday's most epic, disastrous performance at the National Association of Black Journalists event, President Biden was doing what presidents and actual leaders do and securing an unprecedented Russian prisoner swap in which Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich and former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan were released as part of the deal. Thank you again to everyone who did their part. In just a few hours, we'll welcome our fellow Americans. We're looking forward to that. God willing, we're going to be out at Andrews and get that done. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, this is What did you say to them on the phone? What did you say when they answered the phone on the other side? I said, welcome almost home. <laughs> How do you keep countries, these uh, so-called abductor states, from simply taking more Americans in order to get more of their prisoners home? How do you end these perverse incentives, sir? Well, we're advising people not to go certain places. Tell them what's at risk, what's at stake. Mr. President, what's the nature of these negotiations, and can you speak to the complexity of working with six countries to, to secure these releases? Well, look, um, I'm not going to take the time now, but I'll do this later in the week. I particularly own a great sense of gratitude to the Chancellor. The demands they're making of me required me to get some significant concessions from Germany, which they originally concluded they could not do because of the person in question. But everybody stepped up. Poland stepped up. Slovenia stepped up. Turkey stepped up. And it matters to have relationships. It really does. These things matter. Pardon me? Could this improve relations with Russia? Is there any avenue for that after this prisoner exchange deal? As my sister might say, your lips to God's ears, man. Uh, Did you ever speak with Vladimir Putin about this? Would you be willing to speak with Putin now directly? I don't need to speak with Putin. Anyway. How did you weigh that decision of letting somebody out who sounds like that way we were tonight? I got home innocent people. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right, and you are watching this unfold live. President Biden speaking about this historic moment from the White House, the largest prisoner swap since 2010. We're going to see if he answers another question. Yes, I've spoken all the leaders about this. What do you say, Pat? You feel by the way, father? as a father, look, you heard me say this before. I mean it. My dad had a simple proposition. Family is the beginning, the middle, and the end. Blood of my blood, bone of my bone. I can think of nothing more consequential. I mean it sincerely. And having lost family in not a different way, and not knowing what's happening, the circumstance when they're accidental, help, it, uh, it matters. Yet another reminder as to why we must continue to support Kamala Harris and make sure she gets into the Oval Office so as to continue having responsible, intelligent, coherent, patriotic leaders who actually do things for the American people, as opposed to, you know, spending their days sending out deranged, incoherent, old man grievances, race baiting and bitching and whining about actual prosecutors doing their jobs in between golf outings. And since Delulu weirdness, pathological lying, and sweaty desperation is all MAGA has, not surprisingly, couch boy J.D. Vance somehow credited Trump for the release of these Americans. Let's look at that. Do you have a reaction to the news that just came out about the prisoner swap that will bring two Americans back home potentially? Look, I think it's great news, at least what little we know. We certainly want these Americans to come back home. It was ridiculous that they were in prison to begin with. But we have to ask ourselves, why are they coming home? And I think it's because bad guys all over the world recognize Donald Trump's about to be back in office, so they're cleaning house. That's a good thing, and I think it's a testament to Donald Trump's strength. You've, you've explained at length your, your past criticism of the former president. Uh, I'm just curious, though, is there still an issue where you feel like you are on a different level than him, that you feel like you are hoping to sway him on uh, if you were to become his vice president? 
look, my job as vice president will be to help implement the governing agenda. And if, God forbid, something happens to step into the gap. Uh, but Donald Trump's very healthy. I think he's going to be a great president. He's going to be a great president for four years. But my job here is to help prosecute the case, let the American people know what Kamala Harris actually is, what she's actually done. And then when we get in the White House to actually help govern, that's what I'm going to focus on so doing. So it's not an issue where you two differ at all? Look, certainly we're going to differ on issues from time to time. But my, but my job is to provide counsel to the president in private and then try to help him govern and do everything we can to help him do that. Got it. Thank Thanks. you. Appreciate yeah. you, Senator. Of course. Now, even though Cheeto Mussolini was completely unable to deliver health care in four years, unable to deliver a wall in four years that Mexico would pay for, apparently ignored a plague and thought the solution to it was bleach tablets, somehow he believed that he could end, or thinks he can, end the major conflict between Russia and Ukraine in 24 hours. I said very boldly, you could end this Ukrainian-Russia yeah. war in 24 hours. Yeah. How? So I know Zelensky very well because he was very honorable with the fake phone call, impeachment hoax number one. They said I made a phone call to him and I was very threatening. I wasn't at all. I was actually very nice. I was congratulating him on a victory. But when they asked him, they said, did you, were you threatened? He didn't even know what they were talking about. He was very honorable. He could have done grandstand and said, yeah, I felt threatened. I felt threatened. He didn't do that. And as you know, I get along very well with Putin. I would tell Putin, gotta settle. I would tell Zelensky, you gotta settle. I would tell one, you're gonna load up with money. I'd tell the other, you're not gonna get any money. I would get a settlement in 24 hours. Now, it should have never happened. You have thousands, hundreds of thousands of dead people right now, hundreds of thousands. You have cities that are obliterated. I don't know if you've ever seen the cities after they finish with the rockets. You have cities with no buildings standing. It looks like just a demolition zone. It's so horrible. Sad. And you know, and then they'll say two people were hurt. No, hundreds of people and thousands of people were killed. You're going to find out when this whole thing is over that the number of people killed is far greater than they tell you. They're not telling you the truth. Many, many thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are dying. These cities are being obliterated. And basically, they say, what's your stance? Are you for Russia or are you for... I'm for one thing very simple. I want to stop people from getting killed. And I'll have it stop fast. <laughs> The delusional psychobabble that pours out of that portal to hell he calls a mouth could fill the Grand Canyon. Well, President Biden concluded his press conference in this historic event with one major mic drop at Trump's expense. Let's check that out. Well, President Trump has said repeatedly that he could have gotten the hostages out without giving anything in exchange. What do you say to that? What do you say to President Trump now, former president? Why didn't he do it when he's president? Sir, what did you say? Dark Brandon always wins. I'm Michael Hayne. This is Really American. If you enjoy our content, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Talk to you later.